What's the word, y'all? They want the NBA free agency is over, I guess. I, I don't know. Things are still breaking. I just found out Derrick Rose is going over to Memphis. So there's no real good time to, to do a video like this. But let's talk about some of the deals from the day. Obviously, I'm not going to get to every single one. But this all seems extremely long. And I promise you, if I don't talk about your favorite team today, we go, we going to get to it eventually. The season don't start for another couple months. No exaggeration. The, the real winner of everything that happened today is Rich Paul slash Clutch Sports Every single major deal that, that happened today, Rich Paul was attached to it. So congratulations to, to them, I guess. We saw some enormous bags be given out today. Some of them made me really look and, and be like, that's, that's what his value was at? Now, I do want to say this right off rip because it is extremely important. I hope that everybody keeps his mindset throughout free agency for now and for the future. These players are doing the exact thing that you and I would do. Some of y'all know that I'm signing the Bleach Report. I've been working with them for the last five years. If they offer me a dollar amount that is way more than I think I'm valued, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to sign that paper. You know what I'm saying? So you might think a player is overpaid, but again, I, I wouldn't take my frustration out on the individual player because they're just doing what's right for them and their family. If you want to get mad about somebody being overpaid, be, be mad at your front office because they thought that that's what the value was at. Okay, cool. Or be mad at another organization because they rose the price up of a specific player. Just don't come at the players because, again, they're doing what me and you would do. I, my contract is up with BR very soon. And if they are giving me an enormous bag and I'm like, whoa, that's, that's what I'm at, I'm going to sign it. And you should, and you, you should too, no, no matter what your job is. A raise is a raise. So before free agency even started, um, a lot of things happened. Joe Harris got traded. Chris Dorte got traded. Again, we'll talk about some of those things. Not today, but in a future video or whatever. The thing that stood out the most to me was Trent Watford getting waived. And, and that's such a minuscule name to like an average NBA fan. But he's a 22-year-old forward that was at least decent over the last couple seasons. He was making a contract that was less than the veteran minimum. So for the Portland Trailblazers to waive him for practically nothing, I thought in my mind that meant something big was about to happen. And again, there are so many rumors around Damian Lillard over the last, I don't know, 100 years it feels like. That's not what my mind was at because I had a pretty good notion that the Trailblazers were trying to build around Dame. But I was thinking, okay, Getting rid of this $1.8 million contract for this young up-and-coming player, does that mean that they're about to make a, a move to improve the roster right now? And what we found out is that was just to give Jeremy Grant $160 million. Damian Lillard told that team that they want to go win a championship. They said we, we're dedicated to building a roster around Dame that can be competitive enough to compete for a championship and, and their recipe today was signing Jeremy Grant to a five-year, $160 million deal. And that's probably going to be the big move. Now, Anthony Simon is still a name that's rumored to maybe get traded or whatever. But that is a ton of money to Jeremy Grant. And that doesn't mean that Jeremy Grant is a bad player because he's, he's not. He's not a bad player whatsoever. But still... I think most people look at that deal and be like, man, that is a lot of money for what Jeremy Grant can bring to the table. And forget it. Why are we here? Let's talk about all of the contracts that feel like, whoa, that's a lot of money for him. Number two on the list is Fred Van Vliet. He might be the poster boy today of that's a lot of money. He signed a three-year, $130 million contract. I saw a lot of tweets going around um, that he's going to be making more annually next year or this upcoming season than his field goal percentage in his last year. Um... Yeah. Now, I do want to say the Houston Rockets had so much cap space and every single NBA team have to spend at least 90% of the salary cap or they're just going to have to give that money up to the NBA or whatever. So we knew that the Houston Rockets were going to be buyers. Um, rumored well before that was, was going to be James, but James decided he wanted to do something else. Um, we saw that Brooke Lopez was attached to them, Dylan Brooks attached to them, and those players haven't signed just yet. We saw that Freddie was attached to them, but I didn't think it was going to be this number. I knew that in order to pry away Fred Van Vliet for, from the Toronto Raptors, it would have to be a crazy bag, but I didn't even think it was going to be this crazy. I mean, yeah, he must, he might really, really love Toronto, but he would be crazy to pass up on three years, $130 million. That contract is $4 million more than what Kyrie Irving signed for, which is three years, $126 million. And if I'm not mistaken, Kyrie might even have an option on that last year. So Freddie, based on his season, is making more money than Kyrie Irving. And that's just so hard to, to wrap my brain around because Freddie had his all-star season a few years ago. This year was not exactly exactly that. I also do believe that Fred Van Vliet's, Fred Van Vliet was overtaxed in his role with the Toronto Raptors over the last uh, season and a half. Because the first half of last season, 
he was incredible. He had the injuries, and in the second half, he was kind of stinky. Um, and last year, I wouldn't call him stinky, but he wasn't the all-star version of him that was on the roster a year and a half before that. I don't really know what his role is going to be. I mean, his role is going to be goddamn superstar with that amount of money. At least that's what you hope. Um, but again, this is a team that had money to spend and had to spend it somewhere. Another team that had a similar thing in mind is the Indiana Pacers, who paid Bruce Brown over $20 million a year. Now, this one is different than the Fred Van Vliet one because as I'm recording this video, it seems like the Fred Van Vliet money is completely guaranteed. Three years, $130 million. Where Bruce Brown signed in two years, $45 million on the surface level. It's like, oh my God, we talking Bruce Brown who came off the bench? We talk about Bruce Brown who in Brooklyn, leaving Brooklyn, didn't have any offers other than the different Nuggets? You paid him $45 million? But the second year is, is not guaranteed. I'm pretty sure it's a team option. So this is basically a one-year, 20-something million dollar contract for the Pacers who, again, another team that had to spend money to get to the salary floor and they pried away a guy in Bruce Brown who felt like he might be going back to the Denver Nuggets but at this evaluation he can't pass up this one year bag and if he plays great possibly two year bag get that second year guarantee down the line it's a lot of money it's a lot of money now it took a while for it to be reported that this second year was a non-guarantee slash option or whatever um, and, and he was the poster boy of, wow, that was his market. But then when you talk about the second year not being completely guaranteed or the second year being an option, it, it doesn't look that bad. And I was trying to figure out, we, we did a live uh, stream of all of the things breaking. And I'm trying to figure out, okay, what does the Indiana Pacers line look like? Because look like? I really, really do like what they've been doing. Of course, Tyrese Halliburton was an all-star this season. Um, a lot of this year, it was him and Nimhard in the backcourt. You had Buddy Hield, and then you had Aaron Neesmith and Miles Turner. They drafted Jairus Walker, who I think is a good fit. We'll see how he meshes in the NBA. And now they bring in Bruce Brown, and they traded away Chris Dorte, so that's that's opening up some minutes for some things. But you don't pay somebody $20-plus plus million to come off your bench. So I don't know, does that mean that Buddy Hield is, is now coming off the bench? Or maybe you do pay somebody $20-plus plus million to come off the bench. I I, I don't know. But his new teammates seem to be very excited for him. Um, Tyrese Halliburton had some tweets excited. Um, and he's one of those dudes that I honestly do feel like he's going to bring value no matter where he is. Uh, and every at the end of every single season, there's like these cap experts that, that tell you a player if they lived up to their contract. I wonder what that's going to look like at the end of next season. Will Bruce Brown pay play to the to the point where he's worth 22 23 million dollars annually only time will tell one of the more surprising things of the evening was seeing how kuzma go back to the washington wizards four years 102 million dollars and it, it kind of makes sense we think about all the teams that had money that they could potentially throw at kuzma the kings ended up using their money to bring back harrison barnes yesterday and then brought back uh trey lyles on a good deal so uh, it, it seemed like he might have been a fit there. They used their money other ways. Indiana Pacers, again, like we mentioned, g gave a bag to Bruce Brown. Obviously, we see that the Houston Rockets had their eyes set on the point guard and Fred Van Vliet. So the market for Kyle Kuzma, if he wanted to explore his options outside of Washington, dried up really fast. And an alternative of signing a four-year, $102 million contract is a huge, huge win. The Washington Wizards are, I'm just saying interesting right now because I don't know what the rest of the roster is going to look like, but having Jordan Poole in a new situation, having Tyus Jones in a new situation where he can completely start, having Bilal, who's probably a project but still going to get a lot of minutes, um, and Denya Dia having a little bit more freedom to spread his wings, and now Kyle Kuzma comes in or comes back um, and tries to be like, I don't know, like the vet? Is he like the vet over there, Kuz? I don't really see him like that, but obviously he's the NBA champion. You know, he's been a 20-point-per-game scorer. And now he's the highest-paid player, second-highest-paid player on the team because I forgot that Jordan Poole is making a bunch of money as well. But, like, him going back to Washington makes sense in the fact for the Washington Wizards that, like, we can, we can pop him off at the deadline next season if he plays very well under this contract. This is not an absurd amount of money for Kuzma. You know what I'm saying? So he comes back. Could potentially get moved to another team at the deadline, a contending type team. I don't really know, but I, I didn't mind this deal. It was just surprising. Going to the day, if you would have asked me, would Kuzma be a wizard or would he be somewhere else? I would have put a lot of money on him being somewhere else. The Raptors, oh man, this is this has been an interesting day for the Raptors. Obviously, they lost Fred Van Vliet. Um, but they brought it before that, they brought back Yaka Perto on a four-year $80 million contract. That is $20, $20, $20 annually. I mean, <laughs> $20 million annually uh, for Yaka Perto, which puts them on the same uh, playing as Nikola Vucevic when it comes to annual salary or whatever you want to call it. Um, and they lost Fred Van Vliet. And now I was thinking when that happened, like, man, now the Raptors are in this weird spot. And they backed it up by signing Dennis Schroeder to a small contract worth two years. 
And the, the Raptors are a team that's super interesting to me. Now they have this new coach. I thought there was a world where they were going to hit the reset button or retool button. This don't really look like that. I just got a notification 30 minutes ago saying that they're maybe trying to reformulate a deal around Gary Trent Jr. to give him additional years on his contract. OG Ananobi's up for an extension soon, and so is Pascal Siakam. I'm not completely sure what Masai's cooking, um, but he's he's trying to he's trying to cook something. When I thought that it was going the other direction, well, you, usually when you bring in a coach with no head coaching experience at the NBA level, a lot of the times like, hey, we're going to give this dude a shot. We're going to have him develop some young talent. We're going to be somewhat bad and let him learn the, the ropes in the NBA as a head coach. Instead, they're saying like, hey, we're going to keep our core together as much as we can because they couldn't match $130 million from Fred Van We're going to keep our core together as much as we can. And let the rookie coach do his thing. And hopefully we get more ball movement instead of the stagnant offense that we saw all last year. So I don't know. The, the Raptors are one of those teams that I could see being a lot better next season. Again, I know they lost the title of Fred Van But now that we have this different mindset with, with the coaching, I, I don't know. Again, we got to see what the rest of the offseason looks like. Cam got his bag four years, $108 million. Love that for him. Herb Jones got a reconstructed deal. Four years, $54 million. I'm gonna, Again, I think this is one of the steals of the day. Four years, $54 million for Herb. Now, obviously, the big thing about Herb is can we get him to be a knockdown three-point shooter, a super respectable three-point shooter? But the defense speaks for itself. It, it speaks volumes. And with him only being 24 years old, signing him to a contract that's like at the end of it or towards the back end of it, that that's less money than what the mid-level exception is going to be. I think that's an absolute steal. I probably should have started off talking about the Suns because the Suns did a lot today. Damian Lee on a one-year deal, Drew Eubanks on a one-year deal, Josh Kogi is back, they brought in Keita Bates-Diop, they brought in Yuta Watanabe, they brought in Chemezi Metsu, that, that was in, in the last six hours, that's six signings in six hours, y'all, and c considering the place that they're in where they're close to being hard capped and they have all these max contracts, I think the group of guys that they got can come in and, and fill up some roles. I think Kade Bay a lot of people are going to realize how solid Kade Bay Ziop is. Two years, $5 million. He had a lot of good moments with the Spurs last season. Drew Eubanks, I, oh man, Derek always brings up the stat that like Drew Eubanks had the most blocks off the bench in basketball last season. So he could add some value there. Yuta was the, the best corner three-point shooter in all the ball last season, shooting 52% on corner threes. And obviously, he played with Kevin Durant for like a little a little while. I think given the circumstances, I think they walk out of today feeling really good about next season. Now, how would this all look on the court considering you, the only people that are coming back are like Booker, Aiden, and maybe Cameron Payne, like everybody else on the, and Kevin, I guess, everybody else on the team is brand new when you're going to get that continuity phase or whatever. I don't know how it's going to exactly look. Uh, but again, given the circumstance, I thought they did pretty solid. I don't love what's happening with the Miami Heat right now. I'm beyond honest with you, uh, losing Struess and Gabe Vincent uh, in return, getting Josh Richardson back. Last time Josh Richardson was really, really good was when he was with the Miami Heat. Maybe that Miami Heat coach can bring him back to that. Remember, Josh Christopher got Josh Christopher Josh Richardson got traded for Jimmy Butler almost straight up, almost. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, but they lost. Uh, they lost some key pieces. Um, Kevin Love is back too, I guess. But they lost some key pieces. I'm sorry, the Max Juice thing is not confirmed. It was. It was reported about the Cavs signing them, and then there was a secondary report that said they're trying to work out a signing trade. I don't know. I'm not going to say that Max Juice is not on the roster because it's not confirmed. I think the Lakers have been doing some cool stuff um, given the circumstances. They brought in Cam Reddish, which is like a flyer on a dude that was one of the top-ranked players of his class, uh, for a 10th overall pick, but he's been around the block now with the Atlanta Hawks, New York Knicks, the Portland Trailblazers, and now with the Lakers. Um, maybe the Lakers can get him to reach that untapped potential. I don't know. But they stole away Gabe Vincent from um, the Miami Heat, who's who's good. We saw that in the NBA playoffs. And then Rui Hachimura coming back on 351 feels feels fine. Um, Rui went from a guy that was worth a second round pick at the deadline last season to now signing a $51 million contract. So congratulations to him. Uh, he had walked away from basketball for um, a couple months, if you don't remember. And to sign that kind of a deal after that is pretty dope for him. Uh, we'll see how it translates on the court long term. They still have Austin Reeves out there. I'm praising them at the moment. I'm praising them at the moment. But if they lose Austin Reeves, I'm probably going to throw my thumb down immediately. The Bulls ended up bringing back Kobe White at 333. They could potentially go to 340 on incentives. I really like Kobe White. I, again, I thought he's one of the few bright spots for the Chicago Bulls last season. I know the numbers might not say that, but if you watch the Bulls, you saw he got better defensively. He brought a lot of energy, and he can. I, I still have hope in this 23-year-old off guard 
to hit another stride. I don't think he's going to be Gilbert Arenas, which is what he was projected to come out of college. I just found that out doing a TikTok that's going to be on this account later today. Um, he's not going to be Gilbert Arenas, but he's a solid player. And for $11 million a year, I think that's a good pickup. Javon Carter is here in Chicago for three years, 20. And I made a video on my other channel, my, my sh channel, about this conspiracy theory that Chicago Bulls always need to keep one Chicago-born player on the roster. And they have that in, in Javon Carter, which makes me think that Ayo DeSumo is not coming back. I don't, I, know, I don't know how true that is, but you signed another point guard. I just don't know if you're, if you're bringing back Ayo. So we'll see. Again, this is just day one of free agency. Still out on the board are Austin Reeves, Brooke Lopez, uh, D'Angelo Russell, Russell Westbrook, Dylan Brooks, Dante DiVincenzo, who seems like he might be going to the Knicks based on some reports, uh, Kelly Oubre, Grant Williams, and Derrick Rose signed with the Grizzlies for two years. Shout out to D. Rose. Um, the real question, and this is something that I'm going to end the video off here, what happens with Christian Wood? I don't know how to answer. I'm, I'm genuinely asking you in the comment section. What happens with Christian Wood? I, I have no Is he signing for the mid-level less than that? I don't. What is the value of Christian Wood? He feels like a player that because he doesn't have much value or we don't know his value, that he should be going to the Phoenix Suns. And everybody's going to be pissed. And then we're going to realize that Christian Wood, not a game changer. He hasn't been at least. I don't know. You let me know in the comment section. Day one of free agency wrapped. Uh, and we'll, we'll come back to talk about day two and all of that stuff once we get there.